This is a shark. What do you think of when you see this image? Do you think of a gentle animal you'd want to swim alongside? Or do you picture a dark fin slicing through still water and feel an involuntary wave of panic briefly wash over you? This is a stingray. When you look at this stingray, do you think of rays playfully flipping in divers' bubbles? Or do you think of that thing that killed zookeeper and TV personality Steve Irwin? I'm sure that many of you felt a sensation akin to anxiety, dread, or fear. But why? Why do so many of us fear sharks, stingrays, and other similar sea creatures? Today, we're going to dive into that question and what makes these animals so unique and not so scary. Sharks, rays, and skates are elasmobranchs, a subclass of chondrichthys or cartilaginous fish. As apex predators, they help maintain our ocean's equilibrium. They support genetic diversity, Darwin's theory of evolution, and the survival of the fittest by removing the weaker, less fit individuals from a population. In order to be considered an elasmobranch, you must have five to seven gill slits on either side of your body, tooth-like skin cells called dermal densicles, a non-fused hinging jaw, and no swim bladder. As I said earlier, these apex predators do support so many things in our oceanic ecosystems, and without them, our uh, oceans would be so much more different. As we can see here, elasmobranchs help maintain these populations of these primary and secondary consumers. Without them, populations of primary and secondary consumers would explode, resulting in the overconsumption of organisms of lower trophic value, eventually famine, and causing the ocean to become a desert. While elasmobranchs are significant to maintaining equilibrium in the oceanic ecosystems, I also consider them significant to my life my studies, and my future profession. As a child, I questioned why so many fear these animals. Why wouldn't my mom swim in the ocean? Why were the kids on my swim team so afraid of? Over the years, this curiosity sparked a hunger for knowledge. Every school project, I turned into an opportunity to learn more about the ocean and elasmobranchs. As I grew, I marveled at these interesting animals and was fascinated by how they maintained equilibrium in the oceans. Every year, I waited anxiously for July, not for Independence Day or my dad's birthday, but for Shark Fest, so that my knowledge could continue to grow. And with this knowledge came the understanding of how elasmobranchs have shaped the world that we know today and how humans are threatening them. And now, I stand up for elasmobranchs and address the dangers that they are in. My first experience with an elasmobranch in their natural habitat was on a family vacation to St. Simons Island, Georgia. While fishing, my dad and I caught a smooth hammerhead shark. And even at this young age, I wasn't as interested in taking photos of my trophy catch, but rather wanted to release it back into the surf and begged my dad to make sure that it stayed safe so that one day I could see it again. Unfortunately, with the rate that elasmobranchs are disappearing from our oceans, this seems unlikely. In order to understand the psychology behind why so many of us fear these animals, we must first look at the recent shift in human history from celebrating these animals to demonizing them for commercial purposes. Throughout human history, elasmobranchs have been depicted in stories and artwork as both friends and foes. But as we experienced earlier, our perceptions of these animals are typically dominated by fear. I became interested in humanity's relationship with these animals. And what I found through my research was a plethora of folk tales and stories that highlighted the importance of elasmobranchs in religion and culture. For example, in the Marshall Islands, tribes had their own sacred sharks that, if messed with, could cause war. On the Hawaiian Islands, there were nine named shark gods, most notable of which were siblings who aided fishermen and protected the life of the seas. In Japanese culture, there was a god whose name roughly translates to Shark Man, who created powerful typhoons. And 
In ancient Greece, one of Zeus's lovers, Lamia, was turned into a shark demon by Zeus's jealous wife, Hera. Her name soon became the inspiration for the Lamnid shark classification, which includes the famous great white shark. But in recent popular culture, these animals have been depicted as villains. The sharks featured in Jaws, The Shallows, and 47 Meters Down are great white sharks and tiger sharks, which are selected because of their aggressive nature, which is further amplified for entertainment's sake. According to a poll by Ipsos Public Affairs, approximately 51% of Americans are absolutely terrified of elasma brain, most notably sharks. And 38% are so scared of them that they won't even swim in the ocean. Although elasma brains might not be cute and cuddly to some, they should be celebrated for the same adaptations that make them seem so scary. During the 430 million year period that elasma branchs have been on our planet, they have developed some amazing adaptations. Internally, they've developed a cartilaginous skeleton, meaning that sharks and rays don't have traditional bones. Like your nose and your ears, cartilage is flexible, and this allows these animals to navigate their habitat quickly. Externally, these animals have developed tooth-like skin cells called dermal denticles. These microscopic cells are hard like teeth and have grooves, which allow these animals to be hydrodynamic in the water. In addition to keeping these animals up, helping keep animals up with their prey, they also keep them healthy. Due to the size and composition of these dermal denticles, these animals are able to prevent bacteria and microorganisms from attaching to them, which help, keep, help prevent infection. One such example of the cartilaginous skeleton and dermal denticles working in tandem is the case of the shortfin mako shark. This is the fastest shark on the planet and can reach top speeds of about 45 miles per hour, which is as fast as greyhounds can run. Their cartilaginous skeleton and their dermal denticles working in tandem help them maintain these speeds in order to keep up with quick prey. These adaptations have even won gold at the Olympics. Michael Phelps and 98% of other Olympic gold medal swimmers at the 2008 Beijing Olympics were wearing Speedo's laser fast skin racing suit. This suit reduced drag so effectively due to the biomimetic design of the short fin mako shark's dermal denticles that these swimmers had an unfair advantage over those who didn't have the suit, resulting in it being banned from competition a year later in 2009. Aside from sports, Dermal denticles have been inspirational to the medical field. Professionals have developed technologies and materials that mimic the short fin mako shark dermal denticles. These have been used in the, in the operating room in order to prevent cross-contamination of uh, materials and different equipment. And it has been proven to lower the risk of infection in patients following implantation and surgery. However, despite their amazing adaptations, their ability to survive for millions of years, and their essential role in maintaining oceanic equilibrium, elasma ranks are starting to disappear at an alarming rate. The rate of shark killings has increased by 400% in the last 50 years. With this rate of killing is significantly greater than the rate at which these animals can reproduce. So why are elasma branks in trouble? Short answer, human demand and irresponsibility. Every day, approximately 3 billion individuals depend on the ocean for survival in the, ford of, in the form of food and job security. As a result, as human population has increased, so has the demand for commercial fishing. Because of this, humans and the ocean's predators are now competing for the same resources and humans are over-consuming the ocean to the point in which elasma branks are suffering, causing populations of fish to become weaker and smaller. This human demand, alongside unregulated fishing practices, is causing elasma branks to die off and be victim of a few gruesome ends, such as bycatch, 
which is a fish or other marine species that is caught unintentionally while fishing for a specific species or size of wildlife. Shark finning, which is the act of removing a shark's fins and discarding the rest of the shark back into the ocean. Typically, these animals are still alive when they are discarded. Elasmobranchs are also suffering from starvation. Like I talked about earlier, with the increased amount of commercial fishing, there are food resources that are being taken out of the ocean. As a result of this, elasmobranchs are not able to eat as much as they need to, causing them to starve. And I'm sure that most of you are familiar with the most common ocean pollutant, plastic. Plastic is typically advertised using sea turtles with straws in their nose or baby seals wrapped up in a net. And while this is happening, elasmobranchs are washing up with stomachs full of trash and bloodstreams polluted with microplastics. And in addition to plastics, climate change is negatively affecting these animals. But unfortunately, we don't have time to talk about that today. Of 24 elasmobranch species that were collected in a study, approximately one-third were considered vulnerable, endangered, or critically endangered. It is estimated that in the next decade, 20 species of shark could become extinct. This is due to the demand of the ocean, unregulated fishing, and too much being taken out. So you might be sitting there and wondering, OK, I can't possibly be affected by elasmobranchs. I live in a landlocked area, and there's, there's no way that they could affect me. Yes, they can. The average human takes approximately 22,000 breaths each day, 14,667 of which are provided by the ocean. Elasmobranchs help manage the ocean, which provides us with approximately two-thirds the amount of oxygen from our atmosphere. Without elasmobranchs, corals and marine plants that convert that atmospheric carbon dioxide into usable gas start to decline because their predators no longer have predators. And as we can see, an ocean without elasmobranchs is an empty and dying ocean. And a planet without an ocean is an empty and dying planet. So now you might be sitting there thinking, well, this really sucks. But know that this is good. This means that you care. And there's so many things that you can incorporate into your daily life in order to support elasmobranchs. And you don't have to be a marine biologist. Even if you think you're working or studying a field that seems completely unrelated to elasmobranchs, chances are you're not. When we're shopping, we can be helping elasmobranchs. Did you know that many sunscreens, facial creams, self-care products, and more contain elasmobranch-derived products? Ingredients such as chondroitin, which is a cartilage supplement, and squalene, a fatty compound derived from shark liver oil, have been found in many of the products that we use on our skin every day. In addition to this, we need to make sure that we are using our reusable bags. I'm sure you hear this all the time, but for every reusable bag that we use, we are removing a plastic one from our environment. In addition, whenever we are at the grocery store or at a restaurant and ordering seafood, by asking our server, hey, where is this meat sourced? We're making sure that we are encouraging proper labeling and sourcing of this meat. Did you know that there are many instances where scallop, mm, yummy, are actually stingray? Yeah, I heard that, ooh. And cod is really blue shark. And like I said, the more that we ask, the more we encourage that proper labeling and sourcing of these foods that we love so much. In addition, when feeding our pets, we need to make sure that we are reading the ingredients label. Any Ingredients that are nonspecific, such as ocean fish, like, come on, guys, white fish, cave steak, and sea ham, those misleading labels typically indicate that that ingredient is not what you think it is, and it's probably an elasmobranch. Now, I'm not asking you to memorize all of these indicators of fishy foods and products, but we do need to be mindful of the products that we are choosing. And it is always important to remember to look at more than one source when making a decision on buying a product. 
and a quick search does an ocean of good. There are so many readily available resources out there for us in order to make those essential decisions, such as Monterey Bay Aquarium's Seafood Watch and Georgia Aquarium's Seafood Savvy sites and apps. These are excellent resources that we can use to make sure that the meat that we're eating and the products that we're using have sustainable fish that support our elasma brains. At the end of the day, we don't need to be afraid of sharks, rays, and skates. They have been misunderstood for too long, but rather we should be celebrating them for they have been in our world for so long and we should be protecting them as we can see just how significant they are to our planet. And a small act of advocacy for these animals sends ripples of hope for their future and small acts of change on your part can make waves in our world. Thank you.